Hey YouTube family, welcome back to another video of cooking for six people under $20. I love me a budget meal and so today's meal is actually a baked chicken alfredo. I use rotisserie chicken from the store just because it's a little easier, a lot less time consuming. I go ahead and I just chop it all up. Then I add some seasonings to it. I added lemon pepper and a little bit of seasoning salt. I'm gonna be using penne pasta and I boiled that up and then I like to make my own um, Alfredo sauce. If you guys don't know how to make it, this is example right here. I start off with the uh, uh, minced garlic and I let that brown in the pan for a little bit. And then I add my heavy whipping cream and then um, I use Parmesan cheese and sometimes I use the really fine shredded um, this time I only had the grated like this, so I'm just going to use this. It all is the same um, Parmesan cheese. Um, I have noticed that if you use this brand or this kind of cheese versus like the, uh, the processed more cheese, the cheese that's in the bag, it does tend to not melt as quick as this one does. As you can see, I had to stir it for a while to get it to even out. Um, then I went ahead and rinsed my noodles off. Then I added the chicken to the noodles along with the sauce and I mixed those all up together before I put them in my baking dish. Um, this is just what it looks like afterwards. I did set aside some of the sauce and then poured it on top and then I added a little bit of cayenne and paprika. I also added some parsley flakes. For my vegetable, I chose to use broccoli and I just add lemon pepper and seasoning salt to my broccoli. I added a little bit of butter to the pan and then I also added a little bit of water just to get it to, um, you know, simmer a little bit. So that's usually what I put on my broccoli. Um, then I put the pasta in the oven for about 30 minutes on 375 and this is what it came out looking like. Y'all, this was so good, so easy. Um, cheap meal, cheap dinner for six people, quick. And um, my family loved it, and I'm sure- Hey, YouTube family. Welcome back, or welcome to Diesel Cakes. I got a video for y'all today. I'm going to be making some gumbo greens. As you guys can see here, I got all my ingredients I'm gonna be using. I got my peppers, my onion, my shrimp, my turkey, sausage, got my greens. Got all my seasonings, chicken stock, Creole seasoning, garlic, paprika, all the works. So make sure you guys stay tuned for this video. Make sure you subscribe at the end. Thank y'all, let's get into it. Okay guys, so the first thing I did was clean my greens. I will post a video later um, maybe on how I clean and cut my greens to prepare them. Um, but I started off with that and then I cut up my sausage and then I put the sausage in the pan for that to cook. That was the first thing I started was the sausage. I let that get brown and everything in the pan. So while my sausage was cooking, I went ahead and started cutting up my peppers. I did use a red, a yellow, and a orange pepper. I also used an onion. After I was done cutting up all the onions and peppers, I went ahead and added some water to my pot. This is where I'm gonna add my greens and basically just cook everything in this pot. And then I added my turkey um, drumstick to the pot. This one that I got was actually really, really big. It's bigger than the ones that I usually get. But I added that to the pot as well and then I just let that cook for a little bit. So then it was time for me to put on the 
the peppers. Now I added a little bit of olive oil to my pan and I'm just gonna pour the peppers in there and let them cook and brown and get all good. So once I was done doing that, I started adding my seasonings to it. Again, all the seasonings that I used were the Creole season, Slap Your Mama, um, cayenne, I used paprika, I used garlic, and I also used some flour and some chicken stock. Now I did all this, this is creating a roux to put in your pot along with your other things. So once all that was done, I poured that into my pot along with my turkey drum and the little bit of water that I had in there. After letting this cook for about an hour, it was time to add the greens. Like I said, I will post another video showing you guys how I cut them up and everything. But this is me just putting them in and then I gave it a little stir kind of to get them coated with the goodness that was already in the pot. So after letting the turkey drum cook for about an hour, I took it out so that I could kind of shred it up get all the good meat out of it and and I basically just cut it up and then cut it up into some pieces So while that was finishing cooking, I decided to pull out my rice cooker and put on some jasmine rice. Now the way I've seen this recipe, um, people usually don't use rice, but I decided I wanted some rice. Then it was time for me to peel the shrimp so that I could add that into the pot. And I just added it right in. I didn't cook them, I just let it cook with it. And then the last thing I'm gonna add to it is my gumbo base. Guys, when I tell you the smells coming from this were so good, like the smell was just, it was the best thing I've had in a long time. It was really good. And if you guys are looking to cook this, follow these steps and thanks for watching. Enjoy. Hey YouTube family, welcome back or welcome to the channel. Thank you guys so much for coming to check me out today. As you guys can see from the title, I am going to be making a delicious taco pasta. Now, if you've never had a taco pasta, then this is what you want to do to make the taco pasta possible. Now, this dish can all be cooked in one pan. That's right, one pan. You do not have to worry about dirtying up dishes or anything like that because it's all right here. The first thing I did was ground up my ground beef and then I took that off and then I added some butter and some garlic. Now I let that butter and garlic sit, get a little brown, and then I added my rotel to it. Once I added the rotel, I went and added some tomato paste, and then I added some beef and chicken bouillon. Now guys, I did not measure any of these ingredients out. I just kinda just poured and let it go where it went. 
I added some oat milk to the mix. You can use whole milk. I just prefer oat milk because that's what I use in my household. Now, once all that was done, I added the ground beef back to the mixture and kind of gave it a little stir. Then you wanna go ahead and add your taco seasoning. Now, this is what makes it a taco pasta, y'all. So, you add your taco seasoning, then you add you some Worcestershire sauce. While it's all bubbling up and looking all good, you wanna go ahead and add your pasta. Now, I'm using the small pasta shells and I added pretty close to the whole box of it. You don't need to use all of it, but depending on how much you want and how much sauce you want soaked up in the noodles, um, it, it's just a preference thing. So once I added that, I just gave it a little stir, got it all coated nice and good in there. And then I put the lid on and let it cook for a little bit. If you guys are new to the channel, make sure you guys subscribe. Make sure you guys like, leave a comment, and share this video with all your friends, you know. After that, I added some cheese to the mix. Now, you don't want to just dump the cheese on there because you'll end up with just clumps of cheese. So I kind of just sprinkled it around a little bit. I added um, cheddar cheese. I also had a blend of cheese. I want to say it was like cheddar, mozzarella, um, Kobe Jack, just cheeses like that. You can also shred your own cheese, but I didn't this time. Y'all, this is what it came out looking like. I garnished it with a little bit of parsley, put it on the plate, and yes, it was so good. It was- Hey, good. YouTube family. Welcome back or welcome to the channel. Thank you guys so much for coming to check out the video today. As you guys can see from the title, I'm going to be making a delicious, I mean delicious hash brown casserole. Now these are the ingredients that I am going to be using. You can use a variety of ingredients. The main thing that you must have to make this work is hash browns and eggs. When it comes to everything else that you put in it, as far as if you want meat, if you want um, peppers, onions, anything like that, that is all at your discretion. I'm choosing to opt out of all that today because I am making this for the kids. And when it comes to them and peppers, it is absolutely a no. So I decided to opt out of putting those in the casserole today. So I'm just going to use my eggs, like I said, cheese. I put my sausages in the air fryer only because they were frozen and I wanted to get them um, softened up so that I would be able to chop them up to put in the casserole. So once I did all that, I cracked open my eggs. Now the amount of eggs you use, again, is at your discretion. Um, I say it depends on how much you're planning to cook. Now the dish that I'm going to be using, um, or at, I mean the um, dish that I'm going to be cooking it in is a smaller dish. I don't know the exact size of it, but um, I chose to use the amount of eggs that I did. Now, when it comes to beating my eggs, I like to add a little bit of water to my eggs. I've heard of people using milk. I want to say actually the recipe that I was following did say to use milk, but I opt out of milk and I use water in my eggs because um, for me, it makes it a little bit fluffier, but it's your choice when it comes to that. You don't have to put anything in it at all. You can leave it exactly the way it is. Now I used um, cayenne seasoning and I also used a little bit of seasoning salt as well. And then I just mixed it all up guys. And now I'm going to be using my hash browns. Now, usually I have the square hash browns, but I went to a different store and these are the ones that they had at this store. These are more of the oval shaped ones. I prefer the square ones only because they fit in this baking dish a little bit better than these ones. So I had to like, you know, break it in half to fit it in there correctly. So either way, you can use whichever ones you want. I want to say you can actually also use frozen hash browns for this, um, like the package of hash browns as well. Um, I've never tried it like that. Um, I have tried it with tater tots before, but I think any form of hash browns would pretty much work when you're doing this dish. Now, once I got my sausages out of the air fryer, I just chopped them up as much as I could. I didn't want them in like tiny, tiny pieces. I wanted to be able to taste the 
sausages in there. So I cut them up pretty, um, I don't know, I guess it was a pretty fair size. And then once I was done chopping them up, I topped them over the hash browns. When it comes to this part, basically all you're doing is layering this. So you're gonna put down your meat or put down your hash browns first, put down your meat of your choice. If you were using any peppers or anything like that, you would put those down as well. And then you're just gonna pour the egg mixture on top of it. Now it doesn't have to be like overflowing it or anything because once it bakes, it's gonna rise. And then I just patted um, the meat and everything down just to kind of smooth it out before I was gonna add my cheese. Now, the type of cheese that you use, again, that's up to you. This is the kind that I had in my refrigerator, so this is what we're going with today. And I just coated it with cheese. Um, the amount that you use is up to you as well. Pretty sure I put over a cup, but hey, I like cheese, so cheese it was. And then, of course, I topped it with some parsley because that's just what I do. This is how it looked before it went into the oven. This is how it looked when it came out of the oven. Now, I put it in the oven for 25 minutes covered, and then I uncovered it and cooked it for an additional 20 minutes. I let it cool for a little bit. As you can see, it was still a little hot, but guys, this is so good. It can be made ahead of time. It can be saved for later. Thanks for watching. I hope you make this and enjoy it. I'm cooking rice. I'm going to start my rice in my rice cooker first. After I put the water in, I just simply add my rice. Now, I like to use jasmine rice. You can use your preference of rice. I just find jasmine rice to be a little better, and that's just what it is. I just like jasmine rice, y'all. So after you get your rice going, I'm gonna put the top on, let that cook. So while my rice is cooking, I added my ground beef. I'm gonna go and add some bell peppers. I also got some purple onions and a spoonful of garlic. Now I'm gonna just let this all cook together. And then when the, once this is done cooking up, then I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna season it. This is one of my, that's not, is that not crazy to you? That is crazy. Okay. While my meat is cooking, I'm gonna go ahead and put on my broth. I use Better Than Bouillon. I just add some water to it, let it boil, add a couple scoops, and this is how it turns out. So once I was done with the chicken broth, I went back over to my meat and gave it a little stir. Now, what I did next was I drained some of the liquid from the meat just because I don't like the liquid from the meat. Um, sometimes it's a little too greasy, depending on what kind of meat you're using. So I drained some of that, and then I started adding some of my rice to it. Now, you don't have to cook your rice separately. Um, the recipe that I was following actually called for you to cook the rice in the um, pot with the ground beef. But I didn't want to do it like that just because I'm kind of weird when it comes to rice and I like my rice cooked a certain way. The next thing I did was add my chicken broth to it. And I added, I want to say about a cup and a half of the chicken broth. And then I mixed it all up and then I put it on for about 20 minutes, I'd say. And I cooked it on low. I want to say I cooked it on about three and once it was done, this is how it turned out. I sprinkled some parsley on it. Then I simply added some corn with some mixed up peppers and that was the meal guy.